Have you ever felt like something was holding you back? Do you sometimes wonder why it seems like you can never finish what you start? Or have you asked, what's wrong with me? Or why can't I just get out of my own way? I've spent many years feeling like something was literally holding me back. And you know what? I was right. Truth be told, we all have chains that are meant to slow us down and stop our progress. There are many chains that try to restrict us. Chains of guilt, where we beat ourselves up for past mistakes. Chains of depression, you know that dark cloud that follows us around? Or chains of low self-esteem that make us think that we're not good enough and makes us feel unlovable. The many chains that exist in our life are very real, which is why I want to introduce you to the chain breaker. It's important for you to know that while the chains are real, the awkwardness that you feel about those limitations are also very real. And that's because you were not made to be chained. You were not created to be bound by addiction, bound by loneliness, bound by shame, bound by your circumstances, or bound by any negative words that were spoken over your life. You were made to reign, and freedom is your destiny. I'd like to share with you a story that I heard years ago about the elephant and the steak. As the story goes, there was a man who owned a baby elephant whom he loved very much. The elephant loved to play and would occasionally wander off and get lost. For the elephant's safety, the man decided to use a chain to tie the elephant to a wooden stake in the ground so that he couldn't wander off. Day after day, the elephant would try to run off to play or go chase a mouse and each time he'd be yanked back by the chain. After a while, he just stopped trying. Eventually, the elephant grew older and bigger and stayed safely tied to his master's chain. People would often walk by and say, why is this huge elephant sitting there tied to that tiny stake and that little bitty chain? The elephant grew big enough to simply walk off and break the chain, but he was so conditioned to being pulled back that he never realized the chain breaking power that he had in him. And just like that owner, People with sometimes good intentions may have told you that it's in your best interest to not pursue your dreams. You may have been told you'll never get out of that situation or you'll never break that addiction. Sometimes the chains are actually the people that we surround ourselves with. Friends can be chains. Even family can be chains. Just like the elephant, some of you are sitting down bound by chains that no longer have the power to keep you where you are. Some of you have outgrown your limitations. You've become stronger than your addictions and you don't even know it. Well, that's why I'm here today to introduce you to the chain breaker and his name is Jesus. God has an eternal track record of success and a long history of breaking chains. Here's a few examples off of his resume. Joseph was chained and sold into slavery by his brothers. Then he was falsely accused and chained again and thrown into prison. But God showed him favor and Joseph ended up becoming the governor of all Egypt and God used him to save his brothers and the whole Jewish nation. Here's the point, even when those you trust betray you, God can still break your chains and give you the victory. The children of Israel were chained and enslaved for over 400 years, but the chain breaker raised up a man named Moses and used him to lead them out of Egypt and into the promised land. Even when it seems like your chains have lasted forever and been passed down through generations, God can turn it around. In Luke chapter 13, Jesus was teaching in the synagogue when he saw a lady that had been sick for 18 years. She was bent over and not able to stand up straight. Then in verse 16, Jesus says, Should not this woman whom Satan has bound for 18 years be loosed from her sickness? And he speaks the famous words, Woman, thou art loosed. You see, sickness is a chain, and the chain breaker takes pleasure in destroying the chain of sickness. In Acts chapter 12, Peter was thrown into prison after his friend and fellow disciple James was arrested and killed. The Bible clearly says that the church was earnestly praying to God for Peter. Peter was bound by two chains. Then an angel smacked him on the side and said, get up quickly. And Peter got up and the chains fell off. <laughs> Point number one, know that there are people praying for you. We are praying for you. And God always responds to the prayers of his people. Did you notice that the angel didn't even break the chains or unlock them? 
The most important thing to do when you're bound by chains is to get up. Don't stay down. Don't give up because God will break your chains the moment that you get up. In Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas rebuked a sorcerer, which made her employer have them arrested because they stopped their money making scheme. When brought in front of the judges, Paul and Silas were accused of turning the city upside down with the gospel. They were then thrown into the innermost cell, something like solitary confinement of that prison, and they were bound with chains on their hands and feet. Then at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and praising while the other prisoners were listening and suddenly an earthquake shook the prison and the cell doors flew open and all the prisoners chains were broken. When the guard saw the broken chains, he was about to kill himself. But Paul and Silas stopped him, shared the gospel with him and the guard and his whole family got saved. There's so much for us to learn from this. Point number one. The enemy will always attack you more aggressively when he knows that you're committed or destined to God's work. So keep repping Jesus, even when people try to ridicule you for it. Point number two, there's power in your praise. There is chain breaking power in your shout. Your praise and your chains are not just for you. The prisoners were freed because Paul and Silas had the faith to worship in the middle of their crisis. The guard and his family got saved because Paul and Silas unselfishly stayed after being freed. You may feel like you're going through this alone, but people are watching and their deliverance is tied to your obedience. Remember this, your enemies will see you no more. When the Israelites were facing the Egyptians in Exodus 14, God told the Israelites, the enemies you see today, you will see no more. I declare over you that those things that have held you back in the past are just that, in the past, and you are not going to see them anymore. Speak to your chains and make these declarations. Sickness, I will see you no more. Depression, I will see you no more. Drug addiction, I will see you no more. Porn addiction, I will see you no more. Self-hate, I will see you no more. Unforgiveness, I will see you no more. Let me take you to an amazing chain-breaking story in Mark 5. There was a man possessed with demons living in the graveyard. People would lock him up with chains on his hands and feet, but the demons in him were so strong that he'd break the chains off and he'd cut himself with rocks and scream out in the night. One day, he saw Jesus coming and the demons in him yelled out, begging Jesus not to torture them, but instead to let them go into the pigs. Jesus commanded them to leave the man and go into the pigs. When the local people heard the commotion, they came out to see what was going on. And verse 15 says, they found the man sitting, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. The people told Jesus to leave their city. When Jesus was leaving, the man asked to go with him, but Jesus denied him and told him to stay back and tell everyone what God did for him. So the man stayed back and told everyone in the Decapolis, which means 10 cities. Here's some points for you. Even though some people struggle with one or two issues, you may be battling with many demons like this man, but the chain breaker is still ready to set you free. Point number two, look to Jesus and not to people. Imagine this, the man was free from his demons, dressed and in his right mind, but the people asked Jesus to leave afterward? They would have preferred that he stayed in the graveyard and out of their way. People around you may prefer that you stay bound to your addiction and chained to your affliction, but God is about to set you free and send you off to accomplish more in your freedom than many of the haters that are mad about it. Your enemies do not want to see you free, and that's okay. Your freedom is for you and for everyone else that God wants to use you to help get free. Don't keep it to yourself. Tell somebody, tell everybody about what God has set you free from. There are people whose freedom depends on your yes. You may be saying, but I still see them. It's amazing when God breaks the chains off of your life and instantly you never face them again. And it happens that way sometimes. But other times, he doesn't. In fact, more often than not, it is a journey to freedom. In Daniel chapter 10, Daniel prayed and asked God for something and nothing happened. Day after day went by, no sign of it. Three weeks later, an angel showed up with the answer. Daniel asked, 
what took you so long? The angel said, the moment you prayed, God sent me with the answer, but there were forces blocking my way. God had to send another angel to help fight through the opposition. In the same way, there are forces trying to hold you back from what you are believing God for. Your sobriety, your dream, your healing, your restoration. Stay encouraged, it's on the way. The long road to freedom is perfectly illustrated in Romans chapter 7. Paul here is having a major battle within himself and he's losing miserably. He says in verse 14, I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. He goes on and says, I don't know what I'm doing. What I want to do, I don't do. But what I hate doing is what I keep doing. The struggle continues as he says, although I want to do good, evil is right there with me, making me a prisoner to the law of sin. And as if that wasn't enough, Paul closes the chapter by saying, oh wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from myself? I relate to this so much because it's actually the story of my life. Part of my personal testimony is that I was addicted to pornography for most of my life. I was introduced to porn at a young age and I couldn't seem to break this addiction no matter what I tried. Going to church didn't break the chain. Serving in church didn't break the chain. Getting married didn't even break the chain. The chain was finally broken when God showed me that he loved me unconditionally and revealed to me that the power of the addiction was already broken even though I was still struggling with it. Like with Paul, I felt guilt. I felt shame. I felt condemnation every time I was faced with my own imperfections and failures and repeated mistakes. Thank God for the answer to this problem, which Paul sums up in the very next verse, which is Romans chapter eight, verse one. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. In other words, even though the act of sin still exists because we're human, its power to condemn no longer exists. This revelation destroyed my chains. You see, Jesus took our sins with him on the cross and into the grave and in exchange for our sins he gave us life when he rose from the grave he rose with all power and then gave us that power on the inside of us see god is not hopping off his throne to come and break the chains off of us he is the chain breaker and now he lives in us making us the chain breakers look in the mirror my friend you are looking at the chain breaker take a few minutes and imagine what your life would be like without the chains limiting you. What could you accomplish without the chain of addiction or fear or insecurity? What kind of relationship could you have without the chains of guilt and anger or feeling wrong about yourself? Write down the best life you could dream of if those chains were gone. Now imagine what your life will look like one year from now if you stayed bound. What about five years from now? What about 20 years from now? Jot down what your life will look like if these chains are not broken in your life. What will you miss out on? What will your family miss out on? As you finish this exercise, you're probably realizing that now is the time to release the chains that have held you for so long. So from your heart, pray this simple prayer. God, help me to change. Help me to release this addiction, this unforgiveness, this fear. Help me to break those bad habits and live free and whole because that is what you sent your beloved Jesus for. Whatever chains are holding you, release them now to God. This week, go over both lists that you created tonight and each time you do, thank God that because you prayed, your answer is on the way. Do like Paul did. Realize that you're human and let your guard down. Break the chains off your life by sharing your struggle with a trusted friend. Be honest. Confess your chains with someone who will pray for you, walk with you, and hold you accountable. And remember, the chain breaker lives in you, so walk in your freedom.